Alright, welcome back to part two of the Pomodoro timer. In this, we're going to change over to our text editor and we're going to define our Pomodoro timer script. And if you've ever defined a function in Blender, you have to always start out with the DEF and we're going to give the name all lowercase Pomo timer. Inside the timer, we need to count every single minute and we're going to add to our variable Pomo minutes, which is found here in the variable section. This is the really cool part about Serpents. So we've created this for our Pomodoro graph and we can access it within the script as well. So you click on the Get Python Name button right next to the type and you can come in and paste. And notice how the variable exists on the Pomodoro graph and the name is Pomo Minutes and it's changed to lowercase and given the underscore. Now just be aware that if you ever do change anything about the name or you delete the variable, is going to throw an error here, so you have to update your script manually. In Serpens, when you update things, it's pretty dynamic, and things will update in your graphs, but they will not update in your scripts. So just be aware of that. As you change things, you'll notice that, hey, I need to go back and change this variable. So we got our timer, and every time we use it, we're going to add one to our minutes. Let's go ahead and do an if statement, and we want to check to see if those minutes are greater than the work time. And that's going to be on our property here. And we're under the type. You also have a copy, get Python name. And since this property lives in a scene, it's not a variable, so it can be attached to the Blender scene. We need to use the Blender name for the active scene, which is bpy.context.scene. So if we're greater than or equal to that scene, then we're going to go ahead and do something. And we'll obviously set our minutes back to zero. And we'll state that we're now in a break. So we overcome our work time and we'll start up our break time. So we'll set the break active. All we have to do is copy in our scene context and replace it with the scene placeholder. And the break active now becomes true. Otherwise, we can do an LF. So if we're not working, we must be in break. And we better define that as well. So we can hit the enter key down below and we need one more if statement. So we can grab all of these, hit tab to shift them over one and we want to check to see if we're in break first. So if not, and we'll go ahead and look for our break active, and we already have it defined here. So if we're not in a break, we'll be working, and then if we are in a break, then let's check to see if our minutes have overcome our break time. So we can copy this whole section here, paste it, and then we just need to grab the break time property instead. And we'll still set the minutes on the Pomodoro back to zero. And we'll state that the break is now no longer true. It will be false. We'll also say that we've completed the entire Pomodoro at this point. And that's going to be one of our variables. So copy that and paste it. Just increment that by one. And because this function is going to be registered as a timer, we're going to give it the same structure that a timer has. And on the BPI app section of the Blender API, all timers will return a time value. And these are registered in seconds. So rather than defining what that return value is, we're going to use a debugging variable, um, a debugging property, sorry and that's going to be this Pomo debug timer frequency. So type in return, and then we're gonna copy the code for this and give it the scene placeholder. And we have this set as a default right now to one. So every time that this will run, it's going to pull this timer every once a second. And we need to tell this function that it needs to be registered as a timer. And so we have to do that with our Pomo start we always want to check to make sure the timer is registered first before we decide to register it. So if it's already registered, we don't need to register it. If it's registered while we're wanting to deregister it, we also want to check that. So let's start with the start script. So we'll just say if not, and then coming back to our timers, we're going to register and unregister. We're basically going to call the function on the inside. bpy.app.timers is registered. And we're just going to grab in our Pomo timer function. We don't need the parentheses. Then we'll go ahead and register. So we can copy most of this. So 
So if we're not registered, we can go ahead and register. So we'll save this script. We'll save this script. Go to our stop, and we can actually copy most of this from the start. And we're just going to change a little bit for the stop. Because you want to register and unregister the timer when we're not using it. So instead of if not, if it is registered, then we're going to unregister. Save that script. So in order to see what's going on with the timer, we can always throw in a print line right before we return, and we can call the print number of minutes, and we'll grab the pummel minutes. And we can grab the break status as well. And save our script. So now we can go ahead and compile. Oh, we have an issue with our add on. Let's take a look. Oh, we didn't add a colon here. If, another if, let's save our script again and try compiling. There we go. And just back to the 3D viewport. And when we click on the Pomodoro, using my add on helper here that's in the Serpents Marketplace, just going to toggle the console. And you can see our timer is now timing and it's toggling back between true and false. The reason why it's toggling back and forth is we have set our work time and our break time equal to a value of one minute each. And we also set the timer frequency set to one second. So we're not running in 60 seconds right now. We're running this function every second. So we'll click on this again to stop our timer. And let's verify that our timer is now stopped. It's no longer running. So we can update these time values. So let's set the work time. Let's just set it to something like five. And we'll set our break time to something like three. And we can set our debugger frequency to 0 0.5. Let's compile again. And always start and stop your timer before you compile. If you start your timer and compile again, that timer will continue to run in Blender. And you'll click it again, and you'll be making two timers. Um, if you ever have that happen, you can't stop that first timer after you've compiled. So all you have to do is close or save your session in Blender, close it down, and open it back up. And you can start over by running your timer again. So we'll click on our timer, toggle our console. And I'm running it every half second now. So once we hit five seconds, we go to a break. And we hit our three seconds, and we come back out of our break. So we can see now that our timer is working. And when we click on the timer button again for the Pomodoro, the timer should have stopped. We got ourselves a Pomodoro timer. Look at that. So we have the code that works now. We're registering the timer when we start the Pomodoro. So the function goes from being a regular function to becoming a timer function. And then when we stop the Pomodoro, we deregister the function. But the variables are existing in Serpens, and their values are being changed, and the properties values are being looked at as well. And so we're making use of stuff we've defined in Serpens inside of our scripts, which is really cool. That's really as easy as it gets with using Serpens and Python together. And you can use this with all sorts of properties, with uh, Booleans or strings. Your imagination is basically the limit and how far you can go with it. And in the next video, what we're going to do is take what we've defined in our scripts and we're going to set up and make our button on our 3D viewport. We're going to make it a lot more appealing to the user. And instead of having words, we're going to create an icon that will change based upon the timer status, whether it's start or stop, whether you're in break, or while you're working. And then we'll also add some notifications so that when you hit a break time, you can notify your user, hey, it's time for a break, or hey, it's time to get back to work. So catch me in the next video and we'll get updating all that information.